today I will praise the Lord with all of my soul. I will praise his holy name with my whole heart. I will give him praise for forgiveness, mercy, compassion. His unfailing love gives me strength today and every day. Today I worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and I will glorify God with all that I say and all that I do. Today I reflect His greatness and love to everyone, because He is who He said He is. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. Welcome to New Hope. Good morning, New Hope. Today's scripture is taken from Proverbs chapter 2, beginning at verse number 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil from men of perverted speech, who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. The word of God for the people of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. Let's lift up our hands and give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity, God, to come before you, God, and to give you glory, Father, to lift up your name, God, to magnify you, Father, to tell you how much we love you, God. Oh, we want to enter in, Lord God, into that holy of holies where we're just worshiping you, God. As the angels cry out, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, so does our soul, Lord God, cry out to you. Father, thank you, Lord God, for what you have done for us, Lord, how you have kept us, Lord God, how you continue to keep us, Lord God, for we won't walk by sight, God, but we will walk by faith. And so we lift up a praise unto you, Lord. We exalt your holy name. We magnify you, Father, for who you are. Lord, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, allow your Holy Spirit, Father, to fall fresh upon us, Lord God. Fall fresh, Holy Spirit, upon us. Anoint us for such a time as this, Lord God, that we may enter into worship, God, and praise you, God, in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, God, to come before you, to worship you and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. So oh. 
that's why I praise you for this I give you praise for waking me up this morning that's why I praise you for starting me on my way that's why I praise you for letting me see the that's why I praise you Senior here, and uh, super excited to share with you again this Sunday uh, from the Word of the Lord. Of course, this is the second Sunday in November. Uh, we pray that you are uh, remaining safe and also vigilant. Um, let's continue to keep our country in prayer uh, as we navigate this election season. Uh, as you know, um, last week we started a new series entitled Hope Road. Uh, our vision at New Hope is to share with the world a pathway to hope and a future. Uh, this is based on uh, Jeremiah uh, 29, uh, where Jeremiah, again, talking to the people of Israel, declares that God knows the plans that he has for them um, and that those plans include providing them with hope <clears throat> and a future. Um, and we believe that this promise that God made to Israel is a promise uh, that really is true to God's people in every generation, um, and especially 
uh, as we await his second coming. And so Jeremiah 29, God knows the plans that he has for us. Well, <clears throat> if God knows the plans, then to know God is to know the planner. This is one of the reasons that the writer of Proverbs, which you heard read earlier, points to God as the source of true and durable hope. If the reader aspires to a pathway that leads to hope and a bright future, then the writer of Proverbs wants them to know, to know God is a priority. This is true in every generation. The road to hope begins and concludes with God. Well, then the next logical question is, how then do we come to know God? And that's what I want to talk to you about uh, this morning uh, from Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 15. And in Proverbs chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 15, we see essentially three movements that both elucidate for us how we come to know God in richer and deeper ways, but then also what the results are um, and what is the reason for the results that we get. And so what is it to come to know God? One involves a response, two we'll talk about the results, and then three we'll talk about the reason for the results. <clears throat> and so if we want to know God, the writer of Proverbs encourages the reader to respond to wisdom. Somebody say wisdom, right? And please keep your Bible open. And so let's look at the response. Uh, Proverbs chapter two, verses one through four. And this morning I'm reading from the ESV. Uh, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God, right? And so here in chapter two, we see uh, this if statement, right? If. So we know that what follows, it's going to be conditional. If these things happen, then this will be the result. He says, so if, and then if is followed by eight different verbs, right? Eight verbs in these four short verses. So these eight verbs, eight actions in relationship to wisdom. If, if you receive, if you treasure, if you incline, if you apply, if you cry out, if you lift up your voice, if you seek, if you search for wisdom, right? Verb on top of verb, building a, a monument to wisdom's importance, right? Uh, so when the writer says wisdom, what does he mean? Well, it, when he says wisdom, he simply means understanding God's ways, right? So wisdom really just means understanding God's ways. And so the writer wants us to know that there is no um, automatic process. Uh, there is nothing, um, you know, sort of, again, automatic about understanding God's ways. But to understand God's ways, right, to, to acquire the wisdom of God, to understand God's ways involves a deliberate decision to begin and to continue to give attention to the discipline of following God's lead, right? This is a focused passion, a single-hearted devoting to discovering and doing what thus saith the Lord. The writer wants us to understand, in short, that being curious about God's ways and acting on that curiosity is vital for life. Let me say that again. Being curious about God's ways and then acting on that curiosity is vital for our spiritual life. 
being curious about God's ways and acting on that curiosity puts us on the path towards wisdom, understanding God and his ways. Listen, if knowing God is a priority in your life, the question for us this morning is, is that reflected in my pursuit of him, right? If knowing God is a priority in my life, is that reflected in my pursuit of him? Because what the writer of Proverbs teaches us, and really this is reflected in all of scripture, is to know God requires a response. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. The prophet Isaiah, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. On and on and on. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Jesus, the Gospels, uh, the prophets, uh, all of scripture, uh, the epistles talk about our response. That is our pursuit of God. And it is that pursuit that bears fruit. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. And so what then is the result? That's what he talks about in verse uh, beginning at verse number five. Right. That when you and I um, uh, incline ourselves to pursue God, uh, then what he says in verse five is then you will understand. Right. Uh, understand what fear, the fear and knowledge of the Lord. Like if we pursue, then the result is we will grow. Right. We will understand that word. Understand simply means to grow in our spiritual depth of relationship with God, right? We will grow. If, if we pursue, then the result is we will grow. Again, Jesus says uh, something very similar in the Gospels. If you knock, if you seek, if you ask, it'll be given, right? In relationship, uh, in, in, in terms of relationship with God, if we pursue those things. And so what will we grow in? We will grow in fear and knowledge. Those words basically mean reverence and intimacy, right? We will grow in our respect and our regard for God, and we will also grow in the depth of our closeness to him, intimacy. Uh, this all really just is reflective of a total life response, uh, that as we grow in our understanding, we will grow in our worship, grow in our obedience, grow in our service, grow in our love. Why is that the result, right? So he talks about the response. Verse five talks about the result. And then now in verse six, he talks about the reason. Why do we get that result? When we pursue God, why is the result that we grow? Well, he says in verse number six, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. When we make knowing God our priority, and that is reflected in our pursuit of him, then that positions us to take possession of what he's promised, right? That, that we then are in proximity to the grace and power of God, right? Verse number six, and he is the God who gives, right? That's what he says in verse six, gives what? He then gives knowledge. He gives understanding. Right. That if we seek, we will find if we knock, he will open the door. If we ask, it will be given. He gives knowledge and watch this. And not only does he give this knowledge of himself. Right. Uh, James uh, chapter one. If we pray and ask God for wisdom. Right. He will give you wisdom. Um, <clears throat> but not only does he give knowledge and understanding, but he also guards those who pursue life in terms of his integrity. We see that he gives wisdom, right? And understanding, but then he also guards those, right? He gives and he guards. And so um, verse number nine, then you will understand what is right. And so as we pursue God, then God gives. This is the reason why it works, right? God gives and he guards, he guards those that walk the path that he lays out. Um, and then verse number nine, again, another then statement, 
then you will understand what is right. Then as you and I uh, continue to walk with God and God is giving us knowledge and understanding, that knowledge and understanding is progressive, right? God does not give all, give it all to us at one time. Uh, but as we walk with the Lord, right, that is a daily, uh, you know, a daily relationship, a lifestyle of walking with God, then we continue to grow in our understanding of what is right, right? And what, what does he mean by what is right? Well, if you look at verse number nine, it is a life characterizer, three, basically three words that are used in that text in terms of what is right. And that's righteousness is justice and what is fair. And that word fair uh, the, 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 the most, I guess, um, uh, equivalent word in, in our in our contemporary context is equity. Right. It is a life characterized by righteousness, justice and equity. You will find the right way to go every good path. Right. And so <clears throat> as we grow in our relationship with God, as right, right, we respond to him and then and then he responds to us and we walk with him then we grow in our understanding. We grow uh, again uh, in our knowledge and our understanding. Uh, and then he guards those who pursue life in terms of his integrity. And then our lives are characterized by righteousness, justice, and equity. And then you will find the right way to go, right? Every good path. Now, I wanna share with you briefly what the, what the writer has to say when he elaborates on every good path, right? Uh, he leads off sort of in these broad general categories, righteousness, justice, and equity, but then he begins to break it down uh, when we look at verses 10 through 15. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul, verse number 10, and Right. And so so the 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 as we spend time with God and God is pouring into us, uh, then it becomes a part of us. It is a, it is pushed down into our DNA. It is in your heart. And then that knowledge becomes pleasing to your soul. It is a source of internal contentment uh, to know what is right, to be a part of doing what is right, even when all of the world uh, is actively doing all that it can to destroy itself. There is a peace and a contentment in knowing what the truth is and then living that truth out, even in, an host in, a, in a hostile and chaotic environment. And, <clears throat> and so what does every good path denote? Let's look real quick at verses 11 through 15. Discretion and understanding will watch over you will guard you, delivering you, right? Look at that, watch over you, guard you, deliver you. So then as, as discretion, understanding, as wisdom is being hard baked into our system, right? Pushed down into our DNA, woven into the fabric of our being, then it is God's wisdom operating in us that will watch over you, will guard you, will deliver you, right? Watch over you, guard you, deliver you from what? <clears throat> from the way of evil, from men of perverted speech. That just means words that can't be relied upon, uh, who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the perverseness of evil, men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. And so the result of this, of right growing, is not just that as we grow in wisdom, right? That is, grow in our knowledge, our understanding of God's ways. It's not just that it puts us on the right path. It also guards us against against the things that may happen on some of these other um, <laughs> different paths that one might take. That God's presence through his wisdom guards us against negative corrupting influences, right? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a putting something on 
and also a taking something off. It is a gifting, a giving of something good, but also a guarding against something that is negative, that God's presence through his wisdom guards us against negative, corrupting influences. His wisdom helps us to fend off our tendencies, right? Because of, uh, you know, just the, <laughs> being just human, right? In these fallen bodies, living in a fallen world, his wisdom helps us to fend off our tendency towards injustice, unfair treatment of our neighbors, and also shows us how to fend off and correct the injustices that they might attempt to afflict on us. That to know the pathway to hope in the future is to know God and to know God in the context of his wisdom. And so, beloved, in this season, I, I, I mean, I don't know that I even need to make a case about the necessity of this. Like with everything going on in the world, you and I desperately need the wisdom of God so that that wisdom can watch over us. It can guard us. It can deliver us from what? from men of perverted speech, uh, from those who walk the ways of darkness, of uh, those who rejoice in doing evil, delight in the perverseness of evil, those whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Like, like we need God's wisdom now as much as ever before, right? And, and so what does that look like for us to make that a priority? Right. Well, anything that is a priority, if you're living a value directed life, anything that is a priority must be reflected in our pursuit. Now, as I close this morning, I want to lift up what our vision for our church looks like in terms of presenting a pathway to pursue the knowledge of God, to know him and to know his ways. It looks like small groups where you and I come together for times of study and prayer, right? Where we come together to encourage one another to know God by the word and by his spirit, to know him through prayer, to know him through study in the context of fellowship. Uh, this looks like an, invita uh, an invitation to Wednesday, our Wednesday night word are our gatherings together on Sunday, where we gather together in praise and prayer and around the scriptures in order that we might grow in our wisdom, right? Grow in our understanding of God's will. No, grow in our understanding of God's ways. It looks like investing yourself in the intercessory prayer ministry, right? Every day we have a daily devotion at 7 a.m., on the prayer line. Uh, there are many of you that lean in and we get a chance to really, uh, there's a word that is shared and then we pray the scriptures together every morning, uh, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., right? Because knowing God is a priority, we are aligning our lives so that it is characterized by a pursuit. This also involves connecting with your sync circle. So that within the context, because the vision that I cast for the sync circle, when, we, when, when I first presented it to the church, was so that it would be a place for believers to gather for care, right? To care for one another, but also so that we can exert godly influence on each other's lives, right? To encourage one another to be in prayer, to encourage one another to be in the word, to encourage one another to be of service to God, to give back uh, to the church and to the community. And so, and so if, if knowing God is a priority, is that priority reflected in our pursuit? Well, certainly as a church, that's the way it is laid out in our vision. And my hope and my prayer is that this time, right, of, 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 of national crisis might represent a time of personal catharsis for you. 
that as so many things are being shut down and it becomes even more difficult for you and I to, to, to come together as the church, that we would embrace the challenge of it all. Uh, if it means learning a new technology, if it means making an extra phone call, if it means showing up in spaces to serve, if it means returning a phone call that was made, if it means tuning in to a broadcast on a Sunday or, or tuning in to a Wednesday night service, uh, it, uh, it, it, it means if this is a priority, if knowing God is a priority, and, and one of the ways that God makes himself known is through the work of the church in the world, right? The ministry left on earth by Jesus Christ and the ministry that he's coming back for again in his second advent. If this is a priority, is that reflected in your pursuit? It's not easy. But nothing of significance or value is. There's so much that I've had to learn to do in this season. <laughs> you know, there's so many ways that God has stretched me. And, and there have been instances where I had to acknowledge that the moment was too big for me. But it also, and I have to echo the words of the Apostle Paul, it has also become an opportunity for me to learn to a greater degree that God's strength really is made perfect in my weakness. That 2020 wasn't sent to destroy us. No, God knows the plans he has for us. But 2020 was sent to develop us, to cultivate that good deposit that God has already made. My prayer for you is that in this season, God is stirring up the gift. He is not giving you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. I love you. I look forward to connecting with you. I look forward to seeing you connect with a small group, with your sync circle. I look forward to seeing you in Bible study online. I look forward to seeing you not only in worship service, but sharing the service with your friends and your neighbors. We love you. God loves you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, world without end. God bless.